leading the world in domestic terrorist attacks, France, okay? And of course, more homegrown terrorists. All of the European victims, by the way, thoughts and prayers go out to the family. So I'm not saying this to denigrate them at all. What I actually think that it's a travesty. All of the European victims from brutal terrorist massacres, they are effectively human sacrifices at the altar of political correctness. So uh, we're going to be reminding this. Trevor Noah did a segment on um, on uh, NATO and on Donald Trump. Of course, a surface look at NATO. So, so l- 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 there's been a lot of talk, okay, obviously about NATO, the summit, London this last week, especially with President Trump taking a hard line against France, if you guys have been following. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And he left the summit early. Power move. Boom. Trevor Noah ran a segment, <laughs> of course, targeting Trump. Let me just say, listen, I'm, while I have been critical of President Donald Trump, mm. I am 100% with him on this, okay? First off, the UN is a joke, okay? Yeah. We shouldn't be in it. It's terrible. Yep. Even yep. in theory, it's ridiculous. NATO, on the other hand, is a great idea, okay? After World War II, countries came together to try and make sure something like that never happened again. They needed a counter threat to the Soviet yeah. Union. And unlike the silly, completely invalid UN, NATO has only developed into a joke because of the execution. It's the execution <laughs> of NATO. NATO, in theory, is great, but what they're doing is, and then it's like the, the French, too. We have a problem with the, I mean, yeah, of course, of course we have a problem with the French in NATO. Is anyone surprised that France is a problem of international defense? They're the only soldiers who go into battle with a standard issue individual white flag. Like, you guys, you guys have Ready a canteen. Oh my they have a white, they, you, know, you know the gun in the, in the uh, cartoons? Right. They go, Pew! and a little white flag? That's the French. <laughs> it's invented. <laughs> I thought effect. that was Wiley Coyote. Oh my gosh. It was Jean Pierre. <laughs> so let's go to the first clip, which is uh, uh, kind of they're comparing. I think this is they're comparing Trump versus Macron's yeah. comments on NATO. Let's just go to the clip. Asked about recent comments by French President Macron that NATO is becoming brain dead, he hit back hard. Very, very nasty statements. You just can't go around making statements like that about NATO. <laughs> it's very disrespectful. He, In the past, just President Trump has had his own harsh words towards NATO. NATO is, is obsolete, it's old, it's fat, it's sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> NATO is old, fat, and sloppy? I love it, by the way, <sighs> that Donald Trump's comments get bigger laughs than yes. Trevor Noah's follow-up yeah. joke. <laughs> For you know, sure. You know what? Because NATO is fat and sloppy. Yes. Yeah. It's it a is. bloated bureaucracy riddled with wet red tape, and it's entirely ineffective. See, I'm still thinking about uh, I'm still thinking about Wiley Coyote and That's wed true. tape hunting uh, wabbit. No wabbit. wabbit. I'm hunting wabbit Frenchman. <laughs> it is terrible. It, take it is fat and sloppy. That's the perfect descriptor for NATO. And so, of course, you have Trevor Noah. He tries to paint Donald Trump as a hypocrite. And he, he doesn't tell you, though, that... Trump and Macron have completely different reasons, yeah. okay, for being critical. That's important. So let me point this out. Have you guys been following us a ton? No. No, not really. No. <laughs> you, get, you just follow more so the, the transgender stuff and, and games. Yeah. I'll miss okay. <laughs> this, will, this will help. Any questions, you guys let me know. Uh, <laughs> Macron's point of view here is he's upset because the United States isn't policing Syria as, as much as they'd want us to. Yeah. What happened to we need to get out of other countries? This always right, surprises right. me. Every it's single like, time. You're an, em- you're an evil empire. Okay, yeah. but we want you to come in and we want you to... <laughs> Evil empire us a little bit. Can you help us out with this? What what are we? Are we we an evil empire or are we policing the world? Hmm. It's one or the other because being an evil empire is profitable. You just take their (laughs) stuff. Policing the world is spending resources to help other countries, even if they can't benefit you. Everyone wants a little bit more American policing. The people who shouldn't be wanting it are Americans. But I understand why in crap holes like Syria or France, they want our help. I get it. Yeah. I can't blame them for it, but it's not how we should dictate our policy. So, since President Trump has moved to withdraw troops, remember, where's Code Pink? Yeah. Where's Code Pink? <laughs> <laughs> remember that after like, we need to pull yeah. up. Donald Trump is the first president to actually start withdrawing kinda... troops. He didn't just announce it and say, set your date in the calendar, ISIS. I right. just did it. <laughs> like Barack Obama wanted to do, but he's been withdrawing troops. France, they said that we're compromising their position in the region. So, so Macron, <laughs> no. Macron is particularly upset that Trump doesn't share the European Union's vision, right? And he mm-hmm. said that they were, they're facing the brain death of NATO because of differences in vision. Okay. France is demanding that the United States adopt adopt the European Union's vision of NATO, and that if they don't, they say it's hypocritical. Um, especially when we consider, uh, anyway, I, I, you know what, I, hit the notification bell if you ha- if you are subscribed, because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. Join Mug Club, letterwithcrowder.com slash Mug Club, because we're completely demonetized. I'll talk about that more with Ted Cruz. Yep. The point is this, we don't need to be on board with your vision for the EU, no. when half of the EU isn't on board <laughs> for your vision for the EU. Uh, let's go, this is another thing we were upset about, uh, Donald Trump's ISIS comments. When he actually sat down with President Macron, he did offer to give France something in return. We have uh, 
a tremendous amount of captured fighters, ISIS fighters over in Syria. And uh, they're all under lock and key. But many are from France, many are from Germany, many are from UK. They're mostly from Europe. I have not spoken to the president about that. Uh, would you like some nice ISIS fighters? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! problem we have in the region. like how she's like, no, we do not want more ISIS fighters. The greatest non-answers I've ever heard. Oh! Okay. Boom! <laughs> that whole meeting got, as the French say, very f***ing uncomfortable. <laughs> S'il vous plaît. I mean, just look at Macron. You can see from his body language, he's trying to hold himself back. (laughs) But deep down, he's thinking, I swear to God, this buffoon is gonna make me cut a bitch. I swear to God. (laughs) I swear to God. Oh my God, I'm the That's that's, that's, that's what you saw? Because I saw a little Frenchman pissing his slacks. Yes, (laughs) right. Exactly what I saw. Who the hell cares what the French want? Uh, Yeah. I saw a little (laughs) Frenchman who said, get my yellow slacks. Get my dockers. (laughs) I'll take anything. Lois, Levi's, I don't care. It needs to be yellow. The truth is, Donald Trump has a point. Okay, yes, he may have exaggerated when he said that most ISIS fighters come from Europe. But Macron was certainly wrong when he said that European fighters account for a tiny percentage the truth, okay, is somewhere in the middle. Yeah. You, you know, like the surrounded, surrendering Frenchmen. They're usually in the middle, <laughs> surrounded by a firing squad. Yes. So, <laughs> or running away. Yes, yeah, running yeah. away. But they can't. That's why you form the circle. Right. Oh, you form the you circle and you go, fight, it's a fight, move. fight, fight. <laughs> and they go, I don't know what this means, this fight. <laughs> what is this fight? What? I, uh, we are p- So. <laughs> yeah, you will say I'm Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we need the wall. <laughs> So out of 10,000, to keep me out, to keep my impressions up, out of 10,000, here's the number, out of 10,000 ISIS prisoners, 10,000 ISIS prisoners in Syria, 2,000 are foreign fighters. Yeah. Almost a thousand of those are known, at least known right now, to be from Europe. Holy crap. Wow. Think about this for a second. Do you guys remember Jihadi John? Yeah. Yeah. Remember how big of a deal that was? Yeah. Jihadi John, it was a net, like they were going to hang him for treason. That was one guy. <laughs> that was one guy. Right? We found yeah. out that one guy from the United States went to go fight for the enemy. It was national news. Freaked it was bigger than Trump's yeah. impeachment. Right. They have, this is just another day in the, it's just another Tuesday right. for France. <laughs> Imagine a thousand Jihadi Johns. Yeah. Well, Think about that. And by the okay. way, who leads all of Europe in ISIS recruits? Hmm. Take, a, take a guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. I wish we had uh, some accordion music or what's the mm. French music? I don't know what it is. It's France. I, maybe I should, <laughs> I should have, Okay, here, hold, hold on a second. I'll give you a hint. Oh. <laughs> 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 you did just it. blur. You just did blur. It. They've had 1,900 French nationals Jesus. join ISIS. Yeah. That's more than twice that of any other European nation. It's like an ISIS factory. Wow. And Trevor Noah sees that as like, look, Macron's really confident. You have 1,900 terrorist ass yeah, from your country. <laughs> you have no leg to stand yeah. on because it's, your stool's probably been blown up. I'm surprised that many Frenchmen want to fight. I it's don't crazy. think that anyone with a French passport should make it through TSA. <laughs> it's all the question. Uh, put it's them on the ban. You know, also ignore Muslim ban. Just a French ban. How about that? <laughs> I don't even think that we should have sur la table, okay? <laughs> it's just William Sonoma with an even more pretty snooty much. attitude. Yeah, no, much. no. I don't need your new Hario hand grinder, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> Like trying to make a buck. By the way, on top of this, uh, fr- France are refusing to put their own ISIS fighters on trial. Okay, They demand yeah. that other countries take care of the terrorists, and then they publicly oppose it when those same countries sentence them to death for terrorism. This, this is why, again, they should not be dictating American policy. When we talk about America first, this is a perfect example. Sorry, France, you've let your guys join the enemy. You're not doing anything about it. You don't get to send them to us or to any other neighboring countries and then tell them how they should deal with the problem. We don't cater to France. Why? Because we're better than you. Now, hold on, let me clarify. That might be, what do you mean better than, I mean, Take your pick, any facet, we're better than you. <laughs> All of them. So Whatever it is. Better. Economy, energy, ingenuity, healthcare, Olympic medals. I don't care. <laughs> Take it all. And also, I consider that back, back at, at home, France, they lead Europe in jihadi terrorism, it, both terrorist attacks and arrests. And here's a point about Trump, Trump's critique, right? He's been saying for years that NATO members 
and this is something we've talked about, and this is what I want, and I'll get into the history of NATO a little bit for people who don't understand why I think that NATO is important if it were implemented properly, yeah. as opposed to the UN. Trump has been saying for years that countries, members of NATO, need to pay their fair share. This also has caused an uproar. These grave security concerns are the same reason that I have been very, very direct with Secretary Stoltenberg and members of the alliance in saying that NATO Get members must trees. finally the contribute yes. <laughs> their fair two. share and meet their financial obligations. Okay. <laughs> but, That's by the way, he's right. As of 2019, oh, yeah. the United States, we are footing the bill for the entire free world's defense. You guys yeah. were in the Marines. How do you feel about that? It's a waste of money. It does seem like a waste of money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I thank you for your service, but it seems to me like you'd be better served uh, protecting Americans than yeah. ass like that. That's just too much common sense there. It just seems yeah. like too much I common sense. I prefer to be at the border. I think I just heard one of those melanin-riddled Nazis. <laughs> um, They're everywhere. I know. As a yeah. And to give you an idea, the actual numbers, we'll do it 60 Minutes and, and Young Turks don't do. Uh, by the way, happy Congress run, Shank. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the I can't wait, wait, baby. <laughs> the ads are gonna keep on coming. Oh, yeah. right. As a percentage of GDP, we lead all other countries. Okay, yes. and almost none of the countries even manage to meet NATO's two percent threshold. I think only the UK does. France is at one point eight percent, while we're over three point four percent. And in total, the United States spends more on NATO than all other nations combined. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. We have Mexico and Canada. We can leave the rest of the crap to you guys if you want to take I'm care. a little confused <laughs> as to what fair share means. Yes. <laughs> I want you guys to help definition. define it for me. No, wait, you did. 2%. And you f that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let it out. I love this. <laughs> let it out, Steven. <laughs> God, I love this guy. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I, I'm sorry, but I get so upset about it. When you think about it, it's like, yeah. okay, after World War II, all right, how about, how about we all pitch in 2%, which, by the way, is like saying, hey, United States, you really... Si you really saved our ass back there in World War II. So we're all going to say 2% because we know that you're really going to be contributing more than everyone, but we'll at least all contribute 2%. Yeah. Then we start contributing 3 4 5%. We're like, can you do the 2 F you! What are we... I just... It is remarkable <laughs> right. to me how entitled the rest of the world is, particularly Europe. Anyway, let's go back to Macron. He's mad that we don't advance the EU's ag agenda. He wants Europe to call the shots when it comes to NATO. Uh, all the while, France is the number one source of European ISIS fighters, and he refuses to take responsibility for them. I, I, you know what, let's go. I, I, I just, I think that I've, I don't want to beat a dead French horse, but <laughs> let's go to the whole, I think, with something, it's the next clip, it's about trade, something yeah. with trade. New tariffs are retaliation against new French taxes targeting U.S. tech companies like Apple and Google. I'm not necessarily in love with those companies, uh, but I love uh, that part. there are companies, <laughs> they're American companies. I want to tax those companies. They're not going to be taxed by France. I'm not going to let people take advantage of American companies because if anyone's going to take advantage of the American companies, it's going to be us. It's not going to be France. <laughs> It Yo. makes perfect sense. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Donald Trump is rock and roll, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. How dare you take advantage of American companies? That's what I was going to do. <laughs> this man is one of a kind. He's like the world's worst superhero. No, that'd be you. What? You know yeah. who's you know who's not rock and roll? Trevor Noah. Yeah. <laughs> if you would be absolutely pummeled by Drake in a Jello fight, <laughs> I don't think you should be uh, speaking for minorities in late night. By the way, why are they upset? About, whatever happened to taxing big companies? Right, right? that should right. be the thing, right? Yeah. Shouldn't they be? Shouldn't they be pleased, tickled pink right. Democrats to hear this? But really, if, if President Trump, all he's saying is that if American companies are going to be taxed, the revenue should go to the United States and not France. Could yeah. there be a more bipartisan stance to take? No. Right. Yeah, <laughs> makes perfect sense to me. I, I, I couldn't. It could, would AOC be saying, "Hey, we shouldn't have Amazon set up shop here in New York because we want them set up in Marseille." Yeah, <laughs> and they need to have an ISIS division. Yes, <laughs> ISIS training is important. Regardless of what you think about the tariffs and the trade wars, and I'm not always on board with Trump with the tariffs, but why would you be rooting for a country that's trying to damage our economy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a partisan issue, Senator Grassley, Wyden, top Republicans and uh, Democrats on the Senate. They, they, they all just released a joint statement. I think I have it here. Yeah, joint statement saying that the French digital services tax is unreasonable, protectionist, and discriminatory. All of Europe, all of the European victims, okay, of brutal terrorist massacres. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and I'll, 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 you can put me on the hook for this, okay? Leading Europe, leading the world in domestic terrorist attacks, France, okay? 
and of course, more homegrown tears. All of the European victims, by the way, thoughts and prayers go out to the family. So I'm not saying this to denigrate them at all. What I actually think that it's a travesty. All of the European victims from brutal terrorist massacres, they are effectively human sacrifices at the altar of political correctness. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening in Europe. And a big part of that is because they don't want to pay their fair share. The reason that NATO exists to get into the history after World War II, Europe said, we need to make sure this doesn't happen again. And of course they wondered, well, what do we have to do to get the US on board? Because they're the ones who are going to make a difference. And that's when they said, hey, United States, can we have like an alliance? Can we have an agreement? And we know we're not as big as you, but can you give us a, a hand? So. This was the agreement, right? That these people would pay certain percentages and so would we. But they aren't. They aren't upholding their end of the bargain and they haven't been for quite some time. Many of them for decades. The United States is entirely blameless with regards to NATO. We are overperforming, we are over contributing, and we are saving more lives. And, and, and while more of the citizens, by the way, from these other countries, all the while, more of their citizens are converting to terrorist Islam and committing acts, of, I wouldn't say converting to Islam and committing acts of terrorism, and I know people get mad about that, they but do. you know what? I don't yeah. really care. They're one and the same <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at this point. Terrorist I mean, Islam, is not, not all, of course not all Muslims are terrorists, but all right. terrorists. It's kind of like black and bad credit, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's true. I don't know what you're talking about. Cultural differences. <laughs> it's true. I'm out of credit. touch. <laughs> so they're committing terrorist attacks on their own citizens in their own countries. And now they're even going to other countries like Syria to commit terrorism abroad. But st- France, they still can't be troubled to spend their 2% on the problem. Here's my question. Whatever happened to the wealthy paying their fair share? Whatever happened? The top 1%, we hear that all the time, right? Wouldn't governments with trillions of dollars qualify? Can you? You guys open the coffers a little bit and let's remove the fact that there are multi-billion and multi-trillion dollar governments from Europe and they're not paying their fair share as viewed through the lens of identity politics. I, I don't want France or Germany or Canada just to pay their fair share because they're rich and I want to take their money. It's not like some Bernie Sanders tax plan. I want them to pay what they promised to pay because it's their job. The government's first and arguably only job is to keep its citizens safe. France, Germany, Canada, Italy, they're not doing that, we are. So how about this, Europe, okay, how about this? Instead of paying for socialized healthcare, for 12 year paternity leave and retirement at the ripe old age of 32, you start doing your job job at ensuring the safety and future of your citizens. It's why you exist, it is your job, and Donald Trump is 100% correct in pointing out that you suck at it. You know what's in here? It's just water. That's why they call it acting. It actually smells garlicky. There's something wrong with the water. I think it's going through the ice maker. We don't have, we don't have the baking soda in the fridge. If you like this video, uh, Subscribe, hit notifications, or just check back every single day because we upload a new video every single day. And this was actually taken from the full show, a full hour show that we upload every single Thursday. Click that right now. Go watch the entire show. If you don't want to, you don't, you don't have to. But if you, if you stop by, you know, just don't bother me. I'm going to enjoy my garlic water.